So Kalel has put out a recent video where she talks about feeling really bad over the last um, couple of years that she's been vegan. I think she's been vegan longer than that, but um, last couple of years she's been feeling worse and worse and she's really scared. And so she has turned to animal products, eggs and meat as a way to fix her problems. And, you know, that's that's her choice. As I've said before, I don't see any reason to respond to something like that. You know, that's what she's going to do. Um, it sounds like she's still eating, like, mostly plant-based. However, in this video, she has promoted a lot of pseudoscience, you know, because of her her fear, um, her fear of being sick and of dying. She says she feels like she's dying. She has turned to pseudoscience and again is promoting this, you know, to her audience by making this video. And because her pseudoscience of choice is anti-vegan, there's some of that in the mix as well. Some attacks on veganism, basically. So let's talk about it. So she says she's not trying to blame her health problems on veganism because she had these problems before going vegan, but it's hard to take that seriously when in the next breath she says that being vegan has made her problems worse. I do not blame the vegan diet for my issues. There are plenty of people who have been vegan for a long time who are perfectly healthy, and I think it's important to acknowledge that I had these issues before going vegan. However, I think that my vegan diet made my symptoms much, much worse. They made my problems much, much worse because the first four years of being vegan, I was a junk food vegan. Back then, my diet was probably about 80% carbs, both whole carbs and processed carbs, but just it was a very carb-heavy diet in general. And when you have insulin resistance, hormonal imbalance, fungal overgrowth, I don't care what anyone says, literally I don't care what anyone says, carbs are not your friend, whether that's whole food carbs, processed carbs, any carbs, because in order to lower your insulin levels and rebalance your hormones and restore balance to the microbiome, you have to have low and stable blood sugar, which is impossible on a high carb diet. Pseudoscience aside, I'll get to that in a minute. She never mentions a low carb vegan diet. You know, she's basically saying that for people with these problems, and she suggests that that's a lot of people, that veganism will make their health worse because carbs are evil. But if you really believe that, then why not try or at least just mention a low-carb vegan diet, that a vegan diet can be done in a low-carb way? Maybe she just doesn't know that, which is really unfortunate and wouldn't really surprise me. I mean, I talk about this a lot, that because so much of the vegan health stuff is like high-fat, low-carb, it makes it seem like that's the only way you can be vegan, right? Anyway, I'll get more into the pseudoscience that she's using to kind of attack and ultimately reject veganism. But first, I want to kind of talk about where I think all of this is uh, stemming from. So the problem here is similar to what we saw with Tim Sheaf I talked about in my video on that. Um, it all seems to come down to this core dogma that kal body is trying to tell her something. This notion that the body is very wise and it's communicating with us and every symptom has some underlying cause that we can fix with some perfect natural diet and lifestyle, of course. The body truly does have this clever way of showing you your internal issues externally. It is a warning sign from my body and it is a blessing. As much as it has pained me over the years to have problems like acne and my hair loss and all these things. This is my body trying to tell me something. This is very common, and I think it's so common because it's very appealing. You know, this belief that we can take some control over things, right? That all we have to do is like eat right and live the right life and we'll be great and we won't get sick, right? It's hard to accept that sometimes things just happen and we don't know why. And, you know, sometimes we're just unlucky. So unfortunately, this obsession with healing her body naturally has led her to eschew science-based medicine and instead turn to alt-med practices, alt-med treatments for some serious conditions. In general, I would just like to say that I would love to heal the natural way and I'm going to stick to my plan for as long as I can, but I have been considering going on hormone replacement therapy if I don't see results within like the next six months. Obviously, I always like taking the natural approach, but I am feeling pretty desperate to, I don't know, rebalance, get rid of my depression. Obviously, getting my hair would be great or just preventing more from it from falling off. I don't know. I just, I feel like it might be really difficult for me to heal naturally because I think I've had high testosterone for a really 
really, really long time. So I almost feel like maybe if I just took estrogen for a few months, I could kind of like be a little like kickstart. Luckily, if all of this doesn't work out, she does say that she will then, you know, turn to like actual medicine. So that's, that's good. So she says that things basically went out the window, you know, staying vegan um, went out the window when she started to feel like she was dying. You know, that's when she just didn't care anymore and was like, okay, I'm going to um, eat animal products. That seems reasonable if that were true, if that if that were really the only true options, you know, assuming that all of her problems or some of her problems could be solved by eating more animal products, you know, we, we have no idea. But assuming that's actually true then it would be reasonable if your only two options are dying or eating meat. Yeah, you eat meat. But those clearly aren't the only options. She could also just take supplements. Let's say she ha actually has a zinc deficiency or iron deficiency or something. You don't have to eat meat to cure those things. You don't even have to take supplements to cure those things. Now, it's really hard to, if you are actually deficient in iron, it's going to be really hard to fix that with just Whole Foods, more on that um, in a little bit. But like zinc, it's pretty easy to get a lot of zinc on a vegan diet. You just have to focus more on certain foods. And so like not eat high carb, low fat. I think what's so hard for me to wrap my head around is why, you know, someone who was once an ethical vegan, Kal-El, wouldn't just take a couple little supplements. I just, I don't know. I just can't I just can't really understand that. She has a deficiency for zinc, iron, whatever, you know, talk to your doctor, get the dosages that you need. They're usually going to be higher than what you find in a multi. Take that for the allotted time, whatever your doctor says, and then just switch to a multi <laughs> like, or focus more on whole foods. It takes more work, but focus more on eating more, you know, zinc rich foods, iron rich foods, whatever it is. Or again, just take a multi. <laughs> I don't, I, I just don't understand. And I mean, I assume she was supplementing for B12 while she was vegan, right? I mean, everyone has to do that no matter how good you eat as a vegan. So, I mean, what was the problem then? Or maybe she wasn't supplementing for B12. I don't know. I could have taken supplements. I could have taken supplements for iron, zinc, and lysine, but... And this is where I know I'm going to lose a lot of you. I know you're going to disagree with me. I know you're going to be mad at me. That's fine. It's justified. I understand why you're mad. I just feel if you have to supplement so many things, is it really the diet your body is designed for? Again, it all seems to come down to this like grand design concept, right? And this idea that the, the body is perfect, the perfection of the human body, and you can achieve this perfection with a natural supreme diet. So I chose the name a natural vegan for a reason, because natural isn't necessarily good and unnatural isn't necessarily bad. And there is no reason to believe that an unnatural diet is unhealthy or that a natural diet is the best thing for us. Obviously, we can uh, think of a diet that is made up of all whole foods, say they're foods that you grew in your own garden or whatever, that would not be nutritionally complete and therefore would not be a healthy diet. What's bad is causing the suffering and death of animals for no good reason. And not wanting to take a supplement because it's not natural is, honestly, it's about the worst and most irrational reason possible. Especially considering just how unnatural an omnivore diet is anyway. <laughs> like there, there is nothing natural about farming animals, whether they are pasture raised or raised entirely in barns, none of this is natural. Vegans love to act like it is easy to get everything you need on a vegan diet, but I'm here to tell you that I disagree. And it wasn't until I started logging my food in chronometer that I realized exactly how difficult it was. So yeah, if you're just eating whatever, you know, plant-based foods or just eating intuitively, then yeah, it, it can be hard and it's, it's pretty easy to fuck up, right? It's pretty easy to not meet your nutrient needs if that's what you're doing. That's why I plugged a lot of YouTubers um, kind of diets into chronometer a few years ago, including Kal-El's, and pointed out that a lot of these people, including Kal-El, were not eating enough lysine-rich foods. So Kal-El claims that there just aren't a lot of sources for zinc and lysine as a vegan, but that is not true. It's not hard to fix low lysine if you'll just eat some legumes. Like, there's no reason to think that you would need to supplement lysine unless you are allergic to beans or you just really hate them and you don't eat mock meats. 
then yeah, I mean, that's going to be really, really hard at that point, unless you're just eating a whole lot of quinoa and pumpkin seeds and peanut butter. But of course, peanuts are a legume. So yeah, that'd be pretty tough. But for most of us, just eating a balanced vegan diet that includes like three to four servings of lysine-rich foods every day, it's really not hard. Zinc can be a little more challenging, and vegans may need as much as 50% more than the RDA, but it's generally available in protein-rich plant foods. So even, you know, just moderate sources throughout the day, it all adds up. With a protein-rich vegan diet, it's really hard not to get enough zinc. And if you don't, there's nothing wrong with a modest supplement. Again, you can just take a multi. They contain plenty of zinc. In terms of iron, vegans don't tend to have more problems with iron deficiency anemia than non-vegans. That is a myth. We kind of expect vegans to have higher rates, but they don't. However, aside from eating like a lot of lentils with a glass of orange juice for absorption or cooking tomato products and cast iron, there aren't any really easy food-based solutions to a deficiency if you actually do have an iron deficiency. However, as Jack Norris says, if your iron stores are low, your doctor might suggest eating meat or taking an iron supplement. Anemia in meat eaters is normally treated with supplemental iron, not with eating more meat. Similarly, vegans with anemia don't need to start eating meat, but can also be treated with supplemental iron and vitamin C. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to treat iron deficiency in vegans with meat when that is not the typical protocol. It's not the typical treatment used for non-vegans. The first time I was diagnosed with iron deficiency when I was a teenager and was not at all vegan, I was told to supplement with a iron supplement, a freaking huge iron supplement that was awful. No one mentioned anything about meat. And it's also potentially dangerous to recommend to tell women to just eat meat because not all meats are equal in terms of iron. Only a few meats are particularly rich sources. And often, if you are a young menstruating woman who is iron deficient, you're probably iron deficient because you weren't eating those sources in the first place because you don't like them. That was the case for me. I didn't like beef, so I rarely ever ate it. And so because I knew nothing about iron deficiency, I was getting virtually no iron in my diet at all. Telling me to eat more beef guess what? I wouldn't have done it because I didn't like beef. So yeah, I've been iron deficient a lot <laughs> over the years, um, both as a non-vegan and as a vegan. The only thing that I have found that works for me to cure a deficiency, to become sufficient again, is to take several smaller doses throughout the day. So what I would do is take the um, 65 milligram uh, doses that you can just buy at a store. And I would take three of those a day. And every time I would take one, I would drink orange juice with it. So again, to improve absorption and food as well. And doing that, I would not have any digestive or constipation issues. Um, like I said before, when I was first diagnosed with iron deficiency, I was prescribed this enormous iron supplement that made me feel so terrible and so constipated that I stopped taking it. And so I was iron deficient for years later until I finally cleared it up because there was no way I was going to take that pill. And I was young. I was like 15. So I didn't, I didn't understand that it was the cause of all of my problems, my um, like extreme fatigue and like falling asleep in the afternoon and all of that stuff. I didn't know that's what that was. <laughs> I just knew that taking that iron supplement made me feel terrible. So I didn't do it. Point is, doctors should really be better about recommending this to people. I know it's going to be harder to get people to stick with doing that like three times a day. But I don't know, I would rather do that than have to take this one giant pill that makes me feel terrible. So anyway, I would do this like protocol um, for about two weeks or so. I would start feeling better. And, and by better, I mean no more uh, fatigue, more mental clarity, I guess less brain fog, whatever you want to call it. No more cravings for ice. I crave ice like crazy, <laughs> chewing the ice. Oh my God, I love it when I'm iron deficient. Um, uh, no more restless leg syndrome. And it's not just in my legs. It actually goes up my whole body. Like, oh, it's just... Ugh, it's really, really terrible. Um, my heart rate, my heart rate would just randomly speed up and that was really scary. So once all those things are gone, it usually takes about two weeks, then I just switch to a regular multi every day that has iron. And that's what I still do now. I do it when I'm pregnant. I do it when I'm not pregnant. I take a multi with iron. Doing that, I have not been deficient. Oh God, it's been like over three years now, I think since I was deficient the last time. And I was deficient the last time because I wasn't taking a multi and I wasn't eating a bunch of lentils 
lentils every day because when I'm not deficient, I don't like lentils. I don't want to eat them every day. It's only when I'm iron deficient that I really crave lentils. So yeah, like I said, for about three years now, my levels have been great. Even during both pregnancy, I have not had any anemia problems. All that said, please do not assume that you have an iron deficiency if you are fatigued or have brain fog, quote unquote, or whatever, you really should get a diagnosis from your doctor before you just start supplementing with high doses of iron. So aside from B12, it is possible to meet all of your nutritional needs as a vegan from non-fortified foods, but it is inconvenient and there's just no reason not to use modest supplements to make your life easier. And there's no reason to kill animals to get these nutrients either. It can be so easy to fall victim to the anti-supplement fear-mongering. You know, we hear about these supplements causing this and this and this, and we assume that it's like small multi vitamins that are doing this, we don't look further into it and realize that, oh, no, no, <laughs> the people who are having problems are taking these like huge mega dose supplements that are stupid and nobody except for quacks and the supplement industry is recommending that. It's clear that when it comes to nutrition, we need certain nutrients, not certain sources of those nutrients. Months prior to getting my blood tested, I was logging all of my food every single day to ensure that I was getting all of my amino acids and minerals. And I have to say, at the end of the day, you know, I did pretty damn good. I was always at about 80 to 100%. But the thing is, it's not what you consume, but rather what you absorb. And my blood tests show that I am not properly absorbing the iron, zinc, and lysine that I'm consuming in plant form. So this notion that we can't absorb certain nutrients from plants is really widespread from like Weston A. Price people and just anti-vegan people. It's really sad to hear Kalel parrot some of that in her video. But she also admits to eating less than 100% of her daily needs for certain nutrients, even down to 80% for certain nutrients, which she considers pretty damn good. But this isn't school. This isn't like a grading system in school. 80% is not a C. It doesn't mean you pass. It's 100% or nothing. 80% is failure. It means you are not meeting your nutrient needs. This really makes me wonder why she is so convinced that it is absorption of nutrients that is her problem instead of just the fact that she is not meeting nutrient needs, which she admits to, that she is making poor choices and not meeting nutrient needs. Seems like that's the more likely explanation to me. And I have to say, you know, honestly, some days I probably didn't get hardly any zinc or lysine because that is really hard to get. You can only have so many pumpkin seeds and like there's not a lot of sources of high zinc and lysine that you can do being vegan. You cannot fix a chronic deficiency by eating only adequately or slightly deficient for a few months. That is not how this works. Again, this is why if you are iron deficient, they are not going to tell you to just take a multi. They are going to prescribe you higher doses of iron for some amount of time. The same if you are B12 deficient, you are going to take higher doses of B12 for some amount of time until your levels are sufficient, and then you can move on to normal doses. There are a few nutrients that vegans may need a little extra of to make up for slightly lower absorption, again like zinc, but it's nothing that can't be done on a well-planned vegan diet, and it's really easy to do with a modest supplement if you find it inconvenient to get all of it from food, like I do. I don't want to have to think about every little thing that I'm eating to make sure that I'm getting enough zinc, certain B vitamins, whatever else. I would rather just eat mostly healthy <laughs> and make sure I'm getting enough protein because obviously I'm not going to get that from a multi, right? And then just take a multi to make up for any like slight deficiencies I would have just based on my diet. That's a whole lot easier and mentally freeing, I guess, for me. Now, I'm sure there are a few people who have like a rare genetic abnormality that makes absorbing certain nutrients from plants very difficult, but you would never know this unless you were actually eating an adequate plant-based diet first. And seeing as supplements are pretty well studied and they come in forms designed to be extremely available, it's unlikely there's anybody out there who couldn't overcome these problems with supplementation. But if you're still worried, if you still think that there's just something that you can't get from plants and you think you need to eat a little bit of meat to be healthy, 
Why not oysters? They are very likely non-sentient, they are very likely better for the environment, and they are actually richer sources of a lot of these nutrients that people are concerned about, like iron and B12 and zinc, compared to a lot of other meats. I mean, it's kind of weird that Kalel is worried about iron and yet she's turning to eggs. Eggs aren't a good source of iron. I know that oysters aren't for everyone. I have never even had one in my life and I have no intention of ever eating one because, oh my god, kill me. <laughs> I always think of that Mr. Bean episode of the hotel one where he ends up eating all of the oysters and they're bad and he gets he gets really sick. That's that's what I think of. Those are oysters to me. And so I, I understand if that's not something that Kellel is willing to do. Maybe she hates them or just whatever. I know that she's pretty much given up because she feels so bad. And again, I am sympathetic to that. But at least mention it in the video for other people who are maybe struggling and would like some sort of um, you know, compassionate option if they are really worried about meeting their needs from plant foods and they really don't want to supplement. It's It's a good thing to mention. Being the overly thorough person that I am, I got every test done on the planet, you guys. Blood, urine, stool, food allergies, hormones, thyroid. I even tested my microbiome in my gut, skin, mouth, vagina, and nose. So there is this relatively new kind of quack, that's always good, uh, that they exploit people by creating the appearance of scientific credibility by ordering a slew of different tests. It's really nefarious because it, it ultimately builds trust in patients by making them feel listened to, right? Like someone is actually listening, something is finally being done to help them. But what's really being done is their money is being wasted, they're being given false hope, and of course this is just burdening the already overtaxed medical system. Because virtually none of these tests have evidence-based implications, and the vast majority can't really be interpreted to give any indications for treatment. And they love to create this image of most doctors as lazy or indifferent, you know, to their patient's suffering, or that doctors just want to treat the symptoms because big pharma. And unfortunately, Kalel has fallen for it. You can really see this belief, this attitude in her comments about her dermatologists. But it's interesting. I think the high testosterone is what likely caused my super, super oily skin and cystic acne in the first place. And you know, I really wish out of the three dermatologists that I saw, like, I don't know, maybe they could have done some fucking tests and giving me a proper diagnosis instead of just assuming it was a basic acne. They could have done a culture to test for fungus. Like so many things could have been done that they, like, ugh, I wish I was more into research back then. I was just like, so whatever. I just wanted a quick fix. I didn't care. I was like, please, please, please fix me so I can feel good about myself. I didn't, I didn't care about the root cause. So good job, Kalel's new doctor. Doctor, I'm assuming she's a naturopath, but she might not be. She could be an MD. There's some shitty MDs, unfortunately. Uh, you've just indoctrinated another person into this pseudoscientific conspiracy bullshit nonsense. If, you know, I could be wrong. Kalel could have been into that stuff already. I don't know. I have one doctor that I've been seeing, super famous doctor, that I really, really trust her opinion. And she tells me that I should eat eggs and meat. And she's the one administering all of my testing and analyzing my tests with me. So I really just feel like I trust her advice. It's interesting to see somebody make an appeal to authority, you know, talk about the super famous doctor, while at the same time hiding the name of that authority. <laughs> Maybe it's so that she won't like come under fire as the quack that she is. Maybe on some level, Kalel knows that this person is not super credible. I don't know. I mean, let's be real. Most famous doctors are quacks <laughs> to varying degrees and like being quacks and being super confident in some bullshit solution to all the health problems is what got them famous in the first place, right? And yes, that includes many vegan doctors too. The bottom line is that it's not surprising that a functional medicine doctor, quote unquote, would be anti-vegan. You know, it's coming from a practice with leaders like Mark Hyman, <laughs> right? But it is disappointing that kal -El would get roped into this and would end up promoting it. That sucks. Anyway, I want to go into more detail on the the testing and the test results that kal -El talks about and the um, pseudoscientific claims around them and the treatments that kal -El talks about. So let's do it. So apparently uh, kal -El's new doctor told her that she has the testosterone levels of a 25-year-old 
man, hence the title of the video. That's crazy to me. I just cannot imagine a credible medical professional doing something like that. I'm not saying that this didn't happen. I'm not saying Kalel is lying, but just that this is yet another indication that this doctor uh, maybe isn't so credible, maybe isn't so professional. And she's definitely an asshole. After I got those results from the doctor about my hormones, I did freak out for like a solid day. I feel like I've been working so hard on my health. It's so hard to hear that like, you know what, no matter really what you do, you're gonna go bald. So there's a reason that real doctors do not do that kind of thing. If Kal-El does have like hyperandrogenism, it can be treated very successfully with antiandrogens, not hormone replacement therapy that is for low estrogen. It's not the same thing. And a credible doctor would not just leave a patient in panic without at least discussing treatment options. That's really terrible. But instead of having like a clear diagnosis and, you know, some sort of path moving forward, some sort of treatment plan, medication, whatever, Kellel has opted for a low glycemic, low carb diet. For my hormones, I've been on a low glycemic index diet, no processed food, no grains, no fruit for the most part. Every now and then I'll have like some low sugar fruit like berries. Uh, why? Carbs are not your friend, whether that's whole food carbs, processed carbs, any carbs, because in order to lower your insulin levels and rebalance your hormones and restore balance to the microbiome, you have to have low and stable blood sugar, which is impossible on a high carb diet. So the idea is that if you eat carbs, your blood sugar will spike and it will cause insulin resistance and hormonal imbalances. And to that, she attributes symptoms like depression and hair loss. Basically, everything is connected and carbs are to blame. But there's no credible evidence of this. And it's it's ultimately the same thing w that we see on the anti-fat side. It's a bunch of speculation elevated to dogma and extrapolated into this root of all evil concept that makes a very enticing message, but very bad medical practice. Even natural carbs cause blood sugar spikes. This has been proven numerous times by people on YouTube who test their blood after eating fruit, etc. Yeah, and eating fat turns your blood into sludge, as some vegans say. Again, this shit goes both ways. We've been eating carbohydrates, including relatively high glycemic carbs from certain fruits, for a very long time. We've also been eating fat for a very long time. Our bodies are mostly pretty good at not dropping dead from a meal as long as our overall risk factors are low. So not being overweight, you know, having good numbers for cholesterol, triglycerides, etc. Moderation might be a good idea, like getting a balance of fat and carbs, but there is no clear indication of how and in what way certain macronutrient heavy or light diets contribute to or protect from chronic disease. Beyond the fact that some people are just better at controlling or maintaining their weight on certain diets. It's an open question. Kalel thinks she knows the answer to that question, which should be a major red flag. It's a huge red flag because no major health authority holds her views. It's just wild speculation turned pseudoscience and potentially very dangerous pseudoscience if people are turning to this, to eating a low carb diet or whatever kind of diet in lieu of actual treatment, especially when it's for serious conditions that require actual treatment. There's a second thing that's almost equally as problematic that I discovered from my testing. I tested positive for pathogenetic fungus in my gut vagina, urine, and skin. In other words, candida, because it's it's always candida. It always goes back to candida. Look, it, just because you have candida doesn't mean anything. Everyone has candida. Um, I'm not going to talk about this further because I already have a whole video on candida. You can check it out there. We all have fungus in us and on us. It's, it's a normal part of being a human being. Microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and mites cover our skin and fill our pores. Even though we can't see them, they're crawling all over us right now. But you know, just like bacteria, there can be good guys and there can be bad guys. So there's good fungus and there's bad fungus. Problem is I have too many bad guys and too few of the good guys to kind of be my defense. So she starts out fine, but then she fails to 
get the the most important point is which is that how do you know that you have too many bad guys how do you know what too many is there are no standards for population density when we're talking about this stuff other than just obvious symptomatic overgrowth like obviously if you have thrush you have too many quote unquote bad guys so this is likely what's causing my dry and scaling skin because certain species of fungi actually consume the lipids in your pores yeah the oil that come from your pores, these guys consume it to stay alive. There's no evidence that this causes dry skin outside of an overt fungal infection like athlete's foot. And if it were, it could be easily cleared up by a prescription of over-the-counter antifungal. Again, we see this simplification of complex problems and this core evil that's the root of everything here, carbs and candida. It is believed that the microbiome in the gut plays a huge role in our mental health. I mean, I think there's definitely something there. And also issues with the gut have been proven to produce acne. Sure, it's believed by lots of people. That doesn't mean anything. Believed by who? And proven? No, not at all. We know so very little, almost nothing about the microbiome. Quacks always appeal to these fringe areas of human knowledge, and they pretend to know much more about them than any actual expert in the field. And look, they make good money doing so. I know it's appealing to think that these people have all of the answers and that they can help you heal naturally, but conditions like depression are very serious, and acne can be too, you know, at least psychologically. There's as much reason to believe candida is causing any of these as there is to believe it's a disease thetan or a curse. Meanwhile, Actual medical science offers like real evidence-based treatment for these conditions. What am I doing to fix things? So for the fungal issue, I started rotating through four natural antifungals such as oil of oregano and grapefruit seed extract, as well as eating lots of antifungal foods such as coconut and garlic. Kalel needs to see actual professionals, you know, a psychiatrist, a dermatologist, Again, taking potentially dangerous supplements to fight this imaginary enemy <laughs> that's there's no credible evidence supporting its existence. It has not been credibly demonstrated to cause these ailments. It's just, it's terrible. I feel bad for her. When you're battling something like a fungal overgrowth, it is going to be a very slow process because these fuckers are so opportunistic they are so aggressive like you slip up even once and you'll lose like weeks of progress it's interesting to note that a lot of these alt med routines they have this sort of built-in unfalsifiable fail safe for when people inevitably don't get better on you know, whatever routine. So in this case, if you slip up even once, then it just resets things because it grows back so fast. It's like the Freely Harley 30 bad stuff, right? And their metabolic damage. Like you just have to stick with it and you'll see results. And of course you'll gain weight at first because that's just your body recovering from metabolic damage. And then the weight will just magically come off. Someday, at some point, two years, six years, 10 years, who knows? But it'll happen. Different quackery, but ultimately the same really evil genius level of emotional manipulation, right? That's just giving people false hope, blaming them for their failure on whatever protocol due to, you know, minor slip ups. Yeah, it's horrible. So yeah, it's it's sad. Again, I, I feel really bad for Kal-El and what she's um, dealing with. And I really hope she does see someone for the depression and maybe changes her situation if she can. I mean, she she kind of brushes off the whole thing about her uh, breaking up with the person she was with and moving away from family. I think most of us would be at least mildly depressed in a situation like that. That sounds awful to me. That That sounds very lonely and isolated and... Yeah, I think most of us would be pretty unhappy in a situation like that. I'm not downplaying what she said about having, you know, symptoms of depression before all of this. You know, she may have chronic depression and, and that she needs help for. But I don't think that this really isolated living situation that she's got going on is helping that. Again, I think most of us would really struggle in a situation like that. We are social beings. We want to be 
around people. And obviously then just being on YouTube, not even having a job that she can go to and interact with people probably isn't helping things either. I hope she can find that compassion again for animals that I know she had. Um, you know, I, I understand that that she's really struggling and that can really change your values. Absolutely. You know, if, if you're really feeling that terrible and like losing hair and stuff, that's scary. And maybe look more into nutrition. I'm always recommending the veganrd.com and veganhealth.org and maybe come to realize that even though she was uh, seemingly eating a lot of whole plants and a diet that most people look at and say, ooh, that's really healthy. Obviously, she's was not meeting nutrient needs. You know, she says she was logging her food and only getting 80% of stuff. Again, that is not meeting nutrient needs. But yeah, I mean, look, you're you're not, this is a whole lot more than just animal products at the end of the day. It's like the Tim Sheaf's thing. And I'm not saying Kal-El is on the level of Tim Sheaf. I think Tim Sheaf is so far gone. I don't even know. He seems like a really nice guy, but his whole worldview is so skewed. I don't even know where you start with someone like that, right? But obviously, Kalel's worldview, and at least her view when it comes to health and medicine, is very skewed as well. So you kind of, you can't just start with supplement because she's anti-supplement. So you have to go so far back and try to fix all of these little beliefs that she has, some of which I'm sure she doesn't even know that she has and doesn't know where she got them from, right? They're just kind of there ingrained. Um, that's, that's really hard to do. I don't, I honestly don't know how you, how you do that. And I think because now she's dealing with these health issues, so she's so scared, it's going to be even harder for her to listen to other people, right? And she obviously really trusts this doctor. So anyone who is going against this doctor, I I think she's just going to tune him out. Ah, that's a sad way to end the video, but I don't, I don't know what to say. You know, this, this stuff is, this stuff is complicated because people are complicated and we're just not rational. <laughs> you know, we're very, we're very bad at being rational and we're very bad at not falling for quackery you know, and it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. It doesn't matter what your IQ is. <laughs> like <laughs> many of us are so susceptible to this. And usually the smarter you are, the more susceptible you are to this shit. The more educated you are, the more susceptible you are. Uh, sucks. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe, that's cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a new video very soon.